Hey, what's going on, y'all? It's your boy, Trev Pope. Uh, once again, thank you for joining me for another episode of In The Word. I just had a quick message I wanted to share with you. Uh, it's dealing with Jesus uh, and, and the woman at the well. Um, it, it dropped in my spirit today as I was having a conversation with a friend of mine. Um, and the story, if you're not familiar with it, it can be found in John chapter four. Uh, and I encourage you to go and read it afterwards. Always follow behind anybody that's preaching you, uh, preaching to you about anything that they say that is in the Bible. But uh, let's get into the story. John chapter four says that Jesus comes to a city called Sakar in Samaria, a city of Samaria called Sakar, and he sits by the well. And as he's sitting by the well, a woman comes to draw from the well. Jesus says to her, He says, "Listen." Give me to drink. And immediately the woman says, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on now. You're asking me for something to drink when you know that you Jews do not deal with us Samaritans. So here it is. Uh, uh, we see that immediately that this is a conversation that's pretty much probably never had. This is something that is out of the norm. So Jesus goes on to say, he says, listen, if you knew who asked you for something to drink, you would have asked him for something to drink and he would have given you living water. And um, we, she answers and says, and, and we can see that she's not really getting it right away because she says, well, sir, she doesn't understand that he's talking about spiritual water. She says, uh, sir, um, you don't have anything to draw with and the well is very deep. So how in the world are you going to give me water? And Jesus says, listen, whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. But the water that I'm going to give you, he said, you will never thirst again. And it's going to be like a well springing up in you into everlasting life. And what is he talking about? He's talking about the word. He says, listen, what I'm getting ready to give you, it leads to eternal life. So immediately she said, oh my God goodness, you got you, uh, sir, please give me some of this water. So I never have to come here and draw from this well again. So once again, we see that she's not getting it. And Jesus goes in and, and, and immediately he asks her, he says, listen, go call your husband. And the, the young lady says, well, uh, um, I don't have a husband. And Jesus says, you, you're right. You don't have a husband. You've had five husbands. And the guy that you're with now is not your husband. So she goes on to say, listen, I perceive that you are a prophet. And, 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 and I want to stop right there because uh, as we look at this conversation, we've, we've seen to where Jesus and her was an unlikely conversation. We see that she's just not getting what he's saying. Now we find out that she's had five husbands and the guy that she's with now is not her husband. And I said all that to say this, that most people by at this point would have pretty much disqualified her as a conversation or as anybody worthy to talk to just because of her shortcomings, just because of who she was or who she appeared to be. But Jesus goes on and continues the conversation with her. And he talks to her because she talks about, uh, you know, um, we, we're supposed to be worshiping here and worshiping in this mountain. And Jesus says, listen, there's going to come a time where you're not going to worship in the mountain. You're not going to worship over here, but you're going to worship the Father uh, in spirit and in truth. Truth. And she goes on to say, uh, listen, when the Messiah comes, he's going to tell us all things. And that's when Jesus reveals himself to her. And he says, listen, I am he that you talk to. So immediately this woman drops everything, water pot, left it behind, everything runs to the city and says, listen, come see a man who has told me everything that I've ever did. And guess what? A whole city of people comes out to see Jesus. They hear his word. They believe on his word. They get saved. They get so excited about his word. They ask him to stay two more days. He preaches some more to him, gives them that living water. More people get saved. And now they turned to the woman and said, listen, we not only believe on him because of what you said, we believe on him because we've seen him and heard him for ourselves. And I said all that to say this, in spite of all of the woman's shortcomings, she was important. We find out that she had influence, that she had somebody that would listen to her. And I wanted to encourage somebody because let's, let's go back for a second. Let's look at Jesus. When you look at Jesus, 
if he's giving her living water, we obviously know that he's adding more value in this conversation, that he is the most important in this conversation. Why? Because he has the words that lead to eternal life, that living water. But in spite him being the most important in the conversation, he didn't treat her as somebody that was less important. He treated her, he, he talked to her on her level and to the point to where she got what he was trying to say. So now she gets what he, what he's trying to say. She run, tell the men in the city, listen, come see a man that has told me everything that I've ever done. Now here come a bunch of people to get saved and we find out that this woman is important, that she has influence, that she has people that will listen to her that she can encourage. So I want to encourage you that when you're doing ministry, when you're witnessing, don't look at what somebody has on, don't look at their education, don't look at where they come from and feel like they're not that important to talk to. Maybe you might start talking to them and they may sound ignorant to you or they may not talk the lingo that you're looking for them to talk, the type of talk you talk, but how many know? You never know who you are talking to. You never know how important they are. You never know how many more, once they get it, once they get, once that one thing that you say that God gives you to say clicks in their mind and they get what you're saying, they get that confirmation that God has been speaking to them and they run off and spread the information and the word that you've given to them, you never know who that individual can be. And let's look at it in the natural. Let's say you're a businessman or you're a salesman and you're selling products or you own a business. How many know you can't treat uh, uh, people differently when they come in? You can't treat somebody according to what they have on and, and feel like oh they must not have money because they're not dressed they're like the guy that came in with a suit not knowing you don't know who this person is and who they know and who they can influence so I want to encourage and I want to encourage you to, to understand and know that everybody is important no matter who they are you can't uh, uh, you can't determine who somebody is by what they have on, by how they talk, by their race, by their background, by their income level, but you have to treat everyone equally the same because you never know who has the potential within them to change your life or to change others' lives around them. So I want to encourage you, remember, everybody is important. Because how many know that everybody is important to God? That's why he gave his only begotten son to give up his life because he cared about everyone. So know that I love you. I pray that this encourage somebody. Listen, let's stop looking down on people. Let's stop uh, uh, trying to make people be on our level. And, and let's just talk to them according to where they are, just like we would want somebody to do the same for us. All right, know that I love y'all. Y'all be blessed. Shalom.